So, there was a comic that came out in 1989 called Gotham by Gaslight. The game was going to be an adaptation to the comic, literally the exact same thing. The story was set to take place in 1889, resulting in a rather Victorian style to everything. His suit, his gadgets, his cape. Well, I don't know about the cape, but look at it. Flowing around wildly like it's got a life of its own. They literally brought the cape to life. One might say they spent the whole budget on the cape physics alone. Not that I'm complaining, it's pretty cool, but not worth the budget. So anyway, this would be a time where electricity was just discovered and Batman had the whole shebang. Only in mint condition. Using this mint old classic Victorian-esque steampunk jazz, he would spend this whole time tracking down Jack the Ripper. The populace believing he is Jack the Ripper results in him being wanted while tracking down a wanted man. Ironic, isn't it? On top of this, you'd have an absolutely limited form of technology, so your investigations would be more old-fashioned, probably similar to Sherlock. With the occasional meet-up with Batman's loyal bromance companion, Commissioner Gordon. Wait, Inspector Gordon? Yeah, this is basically Commissioner Mustache, but Victorian flavor. My mustache? Your mustache? So iconic. I would want them to keep it, because it is a symbol of justice. It is... Jim, it's a symbol of justice, like the little hammers judges use. You think I don't know that, the Batman? I've had it since I was a baby. Make it twirling like that and I'll be so happy. She's so classy. But unfortunately, they needed help from THQ and THQ was dying off. Therefore, when they died off, they killed everything with it. Perfect. So anyway, on the bright side, they did make a Gotham by Gaslight movie, so if any time worked, two years ago would be it. But alas, it didn't happen, did it? But hey, two years after the movie, it ain't too bad. I mean, otherwise we are getting the same old, modern Gotham over and over again. And how cool would it be to have more than just that? Now personally, what I like about the idea is the old style gadgets and investigation leading to a more Sherlockian feel to it. Just with a cape. Oh yeah, I know this is minor, but I've just been wondering, why is Batman so thick in this game? Look at that. I mean, some of the versions of him are thick boy steroids. But it's been swallowed a shame. What does he eat? Protein shakes? Realistically, I'm pretty sure you couldn't move that fast with a body like that. Well, he is fictional, but you know. Right, uh, anyway, next one. So, remember this game? Good stuff. Well, they were gonna make a second one. It was cancelled because of Shopper Games. The studio behind Web of Shadows closed shop back in 2009 leading to literally all their current video game projects at the time to become terminated, including Spider-Man Classic, which is what it was gonna be called. A studio cancels projects and closes up shop right when they got the good stuff? Damn, where haven't I heard that before? So, in any case, to go over the delightful potential of the game, Let's speak of what's been spoken about thus far. Spider-Man and Wolverine teaming up to take out new villains like Mysterio and Carnage. It was set to travel fighting Spider-Man's most iconic villains from the comics. Told on quote unquote panel by panel faithfulness to the original comic. But due to the determination and all, it was subsequently replaced with Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which fans considered an indirect sequel to the game apparently. While that's all well and good, I gotta say, an actual sequel would be preferable. Now let's talk about what little we know of the plot. Teaming up with Wolverine again, fighting more Spider-Man villains, this sounds like your run-of-the-mill Spider-Man game. But here's a unique idea regarding it. Rather than doing the run-of-the-mill, rather than doing what's expected, why don't we stay true to the endings and creative freedom? So there was multiple endings of Web of Shadows. An evil and good ending. With or without your love interest, apparently that in of itself is news to me. You can save the world as classic Spidey, and get the typical red-headed bombshell Mary Jane. Because you know you want that Mary Juana. 
Can't get enough of her. Or you could go the evil route and let the black suit take over and take over the city. Now that you're in control of the symbiotes. Preferably with your hot babe of a cat lady bombshell cat woman. Her... Black cat. I always get those two mixed up. Me personally, I prefer the bad ending solely because it's a twist out of left field. And I adore both the black suit and the cat lady that comes with it. And having control over an entire city of symbiotes has its perks as well. But anyway, here we have the two endings, good or bad. The routine would be to just assume the ending is a good ending and base the entire game around that no matter what. Could be like that. But that's boring. Let's take it a step further and give it two endings. I know you might say it's too much, but Mass Effect has done the morality thing carrying over, as has KOTOR. And Telltale Games, of course. I wouldn't say it's impossible. In any case, let's say the save transfers over from your playthrough of Web of Shadows, the original game, or the remastered version, which by the way would actually be preferable, and then make the sequel, reigniting the fire, so to speak. Following this remastered version, a world-breaking sequel would come out about a game that accounts for both endings. You know, it actually occurs to me, it might be a problem to make two endings, right? So, alternative. Make it a DLC. A spooky DLC of Spider-Man. It'd be perfect. If it wasn't for the fact that we need an enemy. But we already have an enemy. Thanks to Wolverine bonding with the symbiote. Observe. Are you in full control? Well, I'm dandy. Bring me Spider-Man. Dead or alive? I'm going with... Dead. Making himself a very likely candidate. And, if you ask me, he looks quite badass. So yeah. There, problem solved. This, either way, causes the original to matter. What you do would matter. Choices would matter. And there's gonna be choices, if you ask me. They should matter. So yeah, there you go. It's a lot of big imagination and all that, big ideas, but uh, sometimes big ideas is what we need. And I feel like no matter what, there's always a likelihood of Spider-Man getting rid of the black suit. I always felt it would be neat to have an expanded on symbiote Spider-Man or even a universe where he legit kept it. This game, as a result, will be playing off that. So there you go. But anyway, I would be beyond hyped if they brought it back in some form along with a sequel that actually accounts for both endings, just to provide us fans with content and endings we prefer rather than being stuck with predetermined predictable stuff. Sure, it's a lot of work, but I bet it'd rake in a lot of dough. In any case, that's all for this one. Symbiote Spider-Man is edgy as badass that I would love to experience more in the future. And the Web of Shadows, Alive or Dead, will always remain a classic either way. Next one. Justice League Arcade, a 3D beat em up style game that would have coincided with a movie of the same name. Justice League Mortal. Heh, <laughs> kinda catchy. A concept was taking control of various members of the Justice League, namely Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, with the inevitability to switch them out. At will, mid combat. Living room for some pretty good tactical fighting. The style reminds me a lot of the current LEGO superhero games like DC Batman Beyond Gotham. Yes, I still play those. Switching around and using different abilities at will, only not LEGO, as the style is much more reminiscent of the show that I personally adored as a kid, the cartoon of the same name. It would always have a soft spot in my heart, and seeing a similar style in this game just gets me right in the feels, admittedly. But anyway, it was set to release on the 360, PS3, and Wii, but alas, I couldn't find a deal to get the job done. And the film and game was, ironically, sunk together. I'm noticing a theme with everything being sunk together. Quite sad. But Double Helix recovered their assets and released a Green Lantern game alongside the Green Lantern movie. Green Lantern is a, why not make it multiple lanterns and have mini story segments for each? But I'm getting carried away here. I'm gonna wrap this up, so to put it simply, the game had pretty good nostalgia kick. It looked like it could have been the next uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance of the DC Universe, so to speak. But all well, 
Oh yeah, and to top it off, when you're not doing the story, you'd have like a versus mode too, where you essentially just fight each other and whatever. Or who knows what it could have entailed, but it sounded pretty cool. Maybe there'd be like team versus modes. You know, play with your friends and all that. I don't know. But, oh well. At least for versus, we got Injustice too. Next. Fighters approaching the Joker's playground. Marvel Universe Online. Sounds familiar, don't it? Not much to say about this, as there was far less information to work with. So I'll just say this. Basically, we had City of Heroes, then we had City of Villains. Ah, the memories. Then we had DC Universe Online, coupled with what we almost had, Marvel Universe Online. A superhero MMO in the works. Another, quote-unquote, subscription-based MMO. But alas, it was cancelled, and very little was said on it. It is thus shrouded in mystery, for shame. But as for the potential, you just have to look at the games like City of Heroes and City of Villains. They had character creators far exceeding the subpar bland style of DC Universe. And don't get me wrong, I do like DC Universe. I just got back into it recently as the gameplay and immersiveness is still pretty lit. The customization, uh, not so much. All the characters tend to look butt ugly unless you're a female. <laughs> just saying. And come now. If I want to look like a Leonardo DiCaprio, or God forbid, Jared Leto, I should be allowed to. DC got a Marvel Universe, so why can't Marvel have a Marvel Universe? On the bright side, a City of Heroes is coming back, sort of. A test server, so that's cool. If you play it, characters might magically disappear, so that's cool too. If DC Universe can have their own DC Universe, then Marvel should be able to have their own Marvel Universe. Sounds fair. But alas, <laughs> when pigs fly, right? But hey, I do have petitions that I have sorted out down below that if anybody wants any of these games to happen, they can sign them. Petitions don't always work, but with petitions, there's always hope. And that's enough for me. So, thanks for watching, and if you enjoy my content, want to hear more, want to suggest more, whatever, then like, comment, subscribe. There you go. And uh, la di da, ta ta. Falcon! Ah!